Hey guys, my name is Lily and today I want to show you my bow drilling technique. The bow drill is one of the most important survival tasks that you need to learn if you want to make a fire without a lighter or matches. And honestly, it's one of the hardest things to learn when it comes to survival. So one of the top survival skills is to be able to make a fire just with rubbing two sticks together in the wilderness. So now if you can achieve making a fire in the wilderness, it will not only give you warmth, but also the fire will deter wild animals, predators, and you will get a psychological boost. And it will give you the opportunity to boil some water and to purify water. So fire is essential when it comes to a potential survival situation. Making a boat will set is not easy and it's even more difficult to learn the right technique and to master the boat drill because there are so many things that you can make wrong. Okay, it's just like learning how to drive a car or how to ski. So you have to make multiple things right at the same time and that's why it's really hard to learn the boat drill. Now I myself um, have learned the boat drill myself. Uh, nobody showed this to me and yes, I watched a couple of YouTube videos and yes, I have read a couple of survival books which depicted how to make a boat drill set. Uh, but, you know, the variety of the boat drilling technique is quite big. And with the years I learned to make a boat drill set and I learned a boat drill technique that is fitting me and especially women and weaker people. So in the beginning, when I was learning the boat drill, I was taking a skateboard wheel as a bearing block which works awesome for beginners, so I really recommend that you take a skateboard wheel at the beginning, but it will give you a false sense of security, because then you will think that the boat wheel is really easy to achieve. Now, if I had a, a skateboard wheel with me, I can make a spindle as thick as this here. It's pretty thick, as you can see, and it's working. But without the skateboard wheel, this is too much friction, and Yes, if you are strong like a bear, you can still use a spindle this thick. But I believe that most people can't do that. Because most people are not as strong as Rambo or Arnold Schwarzenegger or Corporal Corner. So it might work for them, for really strong men. But for women, for me, for weaker people, for the youth, this is really hard to work. Okay? So. My solution was to make the spindle much, much thinner. So now my perfect spindle looks like this. It's a little bit thinner than my small finger. And the next thing I did was, I was training myself to learn the bow drill with left and with the right arm. And I'm doing the first drill with my left arm because with the left arm, I'm still not as good with the right one. And then I'm making the notch. And then I do the final drill with my right arm. And this way I have many more tries because with this spindle I would have like two tries and then it's over. With this spindle I have like eight tries with both arms. So this is the big secret. I think there's no use in making the spindle as thick as this. So a thinner spindle works just fine. And you just have to make it this thick so that it doesn't break off. Next thing that you need is a fireboard. And here you can see that I've already made a couple of holes and it's not particularly thick and it doesn't need to be thick. Uh, it's important that it's not too thick so that you get down all the way to the bottom because the small dust ignites only if you're coming very near to the bottom. So it won't happen if you're up like this. And yeah, this is just a normal fireboard from Willow. And I believe this is also Willow. And Willow and Poplar works great for the boat drill fire. Uh, there are a couple of other um, woods that you can use too. And it's important that the wood that you're using is very soft. So you should be able to scratch the wood with your fingernail. So even if you cannot identify the wood, then you just scrape off the bark and you try to scratch the wood. And if you can scratch it with your fingernail, that means that you have a pretty good chance that the wood will work for a boat wheel set. So for example, let's say that you are making a journey into a foreign country where you don't know the vegetation. 
So with this fingernail test you can still find out which of the woods in a foreign country or foreign environment is going to work for the bow drill. And yeah, in Europe and the northern hemisphere you will find willow and this is also called basswood. Um, there are different kinds of willow and they all work for the bow drill fire. Poplar is even better. Uh, yucca stem, flowering stems are even better and many more woods work for the bow drill but not all woods. So I had bad experiences with pine because pine has resin and the resin is really bad for the bow drill fire because it's starting to smear a little bit and then it's really hard to get an ember going. It's not impossible but I would not choose it for uh, the wood for my bow drill um, kit here. And yeah, the next thing that I want to show you is the bow. Now I'm using a bow which is pretty thin and still flexible and preferably it should be green. This is not green anymore so it's only bending a little bit anymore and it's really important that the stick bends because when you are taking the spindle and put it into the string and let's say let's say you have a little bit of slack here at the knot then you will still have tension on the string otherwise the spindle will slip and then you cannot finish the bow drill anymore so for me this works best a small branch which is flexible and um, which puts tension on the string even if it's not perfectly on tension and if you just use a normal branch that is not flexible it's also working but if the tension is not right you will have a slipping spindle and then it's over and what I'm doing here is first I just make a fixed loop at the top and this is just fixed at this one spot and then at the other end I make this small slipping knot which can be moved back and forth so I move it at a certain position and then I wrap around the tag end here and then I take it with my right hand and I hold the knot tight then I take the spindle like this and I use my thumb so that the spindle doesn't flip out of the uh, string which is on tension now. So now the bow is on tension and this is how you can set the spindle onto the fireboard. Now the next thing that I want to talk about is natural bearing blocks and one of the easiest bearing blocks that you can make is just a piece of wood and then uh, you hold the spindle like this in place. But this piece of wood is not good because wood makes a lot of friction so then you have two points of friction which is at the bottom at the fireboard where you want it and then you get a lot of friction up here too which is not good so you need double of the strength so this is the least the least perfect bearing block which I would not recommend and before you use something like this I would rather use a stone with a hole like this one but this is also not optimal because it still has a lot of friction and this is why I have drilled a hole at the side of my knife here and this is much better because now the blank metal comes out and now the spindle has even less friction in here than with the stone. So if I have my knife with me in a survival situation I already have a good um, socket for the spindle. And if I don't have a knife with me, then we have a whole other problem, okay? And the next is uh, the string. So usually people have paracord with them. If they don't have paracord with them, you can also use shoelaces like these ones. These are working, I've tried them already. So you will have more tries with the paracord than with the shoelaces, but most people wear shoelaces and 
most shoelaces are of good quality. It doesn't work with all of the shoelaces, but most work. I've done it many times. So even with normal shoelaces, which are not paracord, it's working. Now, if you don't have any string with you, then you are going to run into a real problem. So making a good string from natural materials is not easy. You can use stinging nettle, you can use uh, the roots of a spruce tree. It's going to work a little, but you won't have many tries. So after two or three tries, the string is going to break. And string is really important. So always make sure that you have a little bit of paracord on your shoelaces or even on the sheath of your knife. Yeah, I definitely have to do that. So I will put some paracord onto the sheath of my knife. Okay, now let's do some bow drilling. Enough of talking. Okay, first I want to make a new tip onto my spindle. The next I want to measure where I have to make the hole, like right here. Now I'm going to use my left arm for the first drill. So the spindle goes into the socket, then we put the spindle onto the small notch that I made and now we keep drilling. And the next thing which is important is that you stay low with the bow and you don't come up. And you notice that my left knee is up from the ground and it presses against the knife like this. And this way I have more control because if I do it like this only, I will shake a lot. So I take my left knee and then I can drill much more stable. Okay, let's speed up the process. So, okay, we did the first drill, which was nice. Okay, next we want to make the notch. And the notch should not be too wide because otherwise the spindle will jump out all of the time. So it should be like six millimeters open or so, maybe five. Okay, so now I'm carving the notch and you see the reason why we drilled in the middle of the fireboard is that you can, you know, uh, take the fireboard at both sides. So if you make the hole here, then you cannot really make the notch anymore. Then you have to cut towards your hand, which is not good. And this way you cannot take the, the board anymore. So make sure that you make the hole somewhat in the middle. So now you can carve like this away from you and turn the fireboard around and cut away from you again. So otherwise you will have to cut to your hand and that's not good. That's a potential risk of injury, which you can easily avoid by just placing the hole at the right spot in the fireboard. Okay, this is the notch that I made. So it looks like a cake where one piece is missing. This is the notch. Don't make it too wide, don't make it too small. Okay, next comes the most important and final drill. So make sure that you have something that you can lay underneath the fireboard, which is collecting the dust. So make sure that your fireboard is not shaking while you are uh, drilling. So it must be really stable. Otherwise, it's going to destroy the amber. So next, before I drill, I will resharpen my drill again and I will remove the black layer here because this is not good anymore for friction. It's too smooth. So I make sure that I coarse it up a little bit. You can also drill a little bit into the center of the hole just with the tip of your knife. You step right beside the hole, okay? And then you lean forward and you put a lot of pressure onto the fireboard so it's not moving. Then you take your other knee here and place it towards the knife so that you have a stable hand. And then you start drilling slowly to warm up the spindle and later you go up with the speed and with the pressure. Now the spindle has warmed up and now we will give a little bit more speed.
Now we should have an amber. Yeah, we have one. Here. We have a small amber going. Nice. So now I will put the, le the rest of the dust onto the pile and feed the amber. Let's feed the amber. Okay. So you can see we have an amber going because it's smoking. And now it needs to sit a little bit to compact. Otherwise it will fall apart too soon and too easily. It's a big nice amber. Uh, I didn't mention it but you also need some fine and dry tinder. And grasses work best. So make sure that you prepare the tinder beforehand. Okay, so here I have some really nice grass which is bone dry and this should work in an instant. But sometimes the tinder is a problem because in wet environments you won't find dry grasses and then you have to shave off the wood of some dry dead standing tree that you find which takes a long time. Okay, so now you make the small bird's nest. Form it with your hands like this and you prepare the spot where the amber is going to go in. You take the fluffiest material to put inside here. Sometimes you even have to rub the tinder in your hands to make it more fine. So this should work now. Okay, now you take your small amber and you put it very slowly into the tinder bundle. Slowly, okay? Don't crush it like me. <laughs> It's still working, it's okay. Don't crush it. I crushed the amber a little bit, but it's still working. Two blows. Woo! Yeah. So now I try to practice the bow drill two or three times a week so that I keep my muscles trained. And uh, yeah, you need muscles for uh, completing the bow drill. And if you are a woman and maybe you are a person which is not that strong, don't make the spindle thicker than this. It's not necessary and you will still get a big enough amber to ignite a tinder bundle. So a thick drill is, is not important in my opinion. Okay, my friends, so now I want to get out of the forest because it's too windy and I don't want any branches to fall on me and if you're interested in this knife here this is my own design survival knife and if you want to get this knife you can get it at my website or at my dealers and you will find all of the links in the description below stay tuned till next time come Amy let's go